In today's episode, we're going to be going through our tier list for albums that have come out in 2022. We do this annually, so it's a huge event. I've been waiting for this episode for a minute, it's a man. a big moment, man. So let's start this off, dude. Let's go on to Her Lost by Drake and 21 Savage. One of the biggest albums of the year. A huge moment for the whole community. We rated it great the last time we did our review. Is it still there for you at it's the moment? It's still a great album. I mean, Drake is giving you banger after banger. He's back to rapping as hardcore as we wanted him to on Certified Lover Boy and Honestly never mind. Then 21 Savage carried his own too. I love Love the one-liners from him, um, production, all the beat switches. It was just one of the most fun times I had with an album all year, to be Absolutely. honest. Absolutely, it's great. It, I, I think it stuck through my rotation pretty well too. I mean, it's been what almost a month now that it's been out, and it still hasn't dropped through. So, listen, I think. And when great was the last time nice you rating. got a fucking collab album that was that hit that hard, bro? Like it's been a minute. It has been a minute. Yeah. So a load of value there. Her loss goes into great. Let's go into Miss Morale and the Big Steppers. Arguably, probably the biggest moment for rap this year and also for the channel. Thank you so much to everyone that tuned in for that whole rollout. It was massive for us as well. But let's dive into this album, man. So it's been what now? Like six months since it's been a while, bro. How, how has the narrative changed since the review for you? And, you know, talk to me about it in your rotation. Still an amazing album. I mean, in terms of my rotation, I'm not playing this one as much as I have been other Kendrick albums this year, to be honest with you. So the replay value isn't there, but as a concept, it's brilliant. I love that Kendrick did take more of this mellow approach. I would have liked to have him come with more of that energy of being the greatest rapper alive, but it kind of took a different kind of approach about you know generational trauma and all the kind of trials and tribulations he's had to endure. The rapping is great, and um, yeah, for a double-sided album, definitely one of the best we've had in a long time. Yeah, I like the replay value for a double-sided album. Because example, we've gotten double-sided albums in the past where you feel like it's kind of a drag going from side A to side B, or you feel like, okay, you know what, there's a lot of songs on here that shouldn't have made the album. I don't feel like that was the case with Mr. Mall and the Big Steppers, and as you said, fantastic concept behind the record. I also feel like Kendrick's, you know, writing kind of matured on this one while still taking more of a simplistic approach to the underwhelming writing. production. What are you saying on uh, that? No, I still think it, it was a bit underwhelming. I, I find it did super well for what was going on in the album, and I feel like you needed that type of production. It's super to minimalistic, bro. I'm, uh, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm not used that, to though, hearing you know? that from Kendrick, and I mean, I don't, th I don't think that as a knock that he hasn't gone there before. It's just I felt like the beats kind of fell flat at certain points. You know what I mean? You had so many productions yeah, where you just where had coming from piano-driven instrumentals and not much, but. Again, it did kind of play into the whole um, theatrical element of the album. But um, definitely a great record this year. But next up, I Never Liked You by Future. Okay, so listen, when we had put this out, we really didn't enjoy it. And I didn't think there was going to be much that was salvageable with it. And we did this review back in May. This was at the time where Come Home, The Kids Miss You had just dropped. Um, then after that, no, I think Come Home, The Kids Miss You was after that. It was around that Kendrick period, you know, where you had it's like all that around four, the same time. It's Almost Dry was around there as well. And I was really hyped for this release because I wanted to get slapped on this and at first I didn't necessarily gravitate towards much on the track list but as time has gone on and as the year has progressed I find myself going back to a great amount of tracks actually not too much but still songs like Chickens stuff like let's say 7-12pm stuff like Puffin on Zooties I think there is quality within this track list and I would take it out of the mid I think, I, I think that's just an expectation though you know what I mean for Future yeah. to give you bangers I mean you're obviously going to get that on every Future project but there has been a bit of a decline like starting off with Wizard, which was pretty good, then High Off Life, you saw a bit of a dip, and now Red, I Never Liked You, and I just feel like um, it's really not Future's best work in terms of tracks that I would keep. There's 7, 12 p.m., there's Puffin on Zooties, Gold Stacks, Wait For You. Um, Chickens is good, too. Chickens Come is all right, but Worst Day, Affiliated... Just super forgettable of a track list. So what do we sing? Because we had originally given this mid. I, you think wanna go, mid. I think it's mid. You want to go mid again? I yeah. would not have a problem going good with it. I do have songs I take out with it, but Lou wants to go mid. I'll go with it as well. So that was that. Let's keep going on with this. The Forever Story. One of the most um, celebrated albums this year from the community. People think that this is a lock for album that, of the that's year. That's the popular opinion, bro. Yeah, that they think this it's album is the album of the year. And... I can't really debate against that, bro. I mean, there's literally no skips on the entire fucking track list. Yeah. You have J.I.D. showing that in terms of his class and rappers that are around his age, no one has mastered the art of flow as well as he has. You're getting amazing storytelling tracks like Crack Sandwich, which is absolutely riveting, kind of giving you that glimpse of his personal life, of his family life. That shit was impeccable. Um, the features brought it home too. Lil Wayne, most deaf did his thing. Um... Where are the flaws? Because if we're going to slot it into amazing, which is the review that we gave it, that was the score we gave it, does it go into perfect now? Like, has it changed for you? No, I think it's still an amazing album. Okay. Like, it's not I a agree. perfect record, you know? Like, I could 
I could think about a couple of other records, let's say not from this year, but from last year. Maybe that I find maybe a bit better than the Forever Story. Example, sometimes I might be introvert by Little Sims. That's an album where I wish I would have given that a perfect rating. Yeah. But okay, the Forever Story goes into amazing. That does not change. Come Home, The Kids Miss You by Jack Harlow. I feel like we've spoken, you know, so much shit about this album and about like the whole run Jacks had this year in 2022. You really put it into the fucking <laughs> ringer, bro. I, I know. I, I feel I, bad because like I'm actually rooting for Jack. I, I, I'm not gonna I, lie to you. Well, I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't expect you to say that, considering no. on how bad we both spoke about the album this year. And it, it's not <laughs> that, you know. It's just like when what's poppin' ended up coming through, and then after that. You know, that's what they all say ended up dropping. Um, when you hear songs like Nail Tech, you get hyped. You know, you're genuinely invested into someone's career and the way that they're going to forward through with an album. Then you get Come Home, The Kids Miss You, and you realize that it's one of the worst attempts of like kind of going pop rap, bro, yeah. out of like any other album that I'd gotten this year. And like we had said in the review, if you're trying to make a Drake album, don't make a Drake album, you know, like don't go there. Like you can't replicate what Drake has done. And yeah. like, even at that, something like first class on the whole album, that's probably the biggest song that he released this year. It's not even him that's doing the melodic performance. It's more fucking Fergie in that sample and back. So it's like, what value are you getting out of the come, come home? The kids miss you. I still can't find none. I would still keep it. Production at was lackluster. Samples carried him on, on a lot of the songs. Um, it sounded forced in terms of his writing. It sounded like he was, kind of searching for words to fill up the verses on so many tracks on here. Um, and a lot of just cringy love tales from Jack. And I just didn't have that charisma and that energy that kind of gra made me gravitate towards the sound from the beginning of his career. Um, I think it's a bad album, bro. You, okay, you'd go down to bad with down this to one. Down to bad. Wow, okay. So <laughs> just when you think it could get worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? Okay, let's go down to bad with it. I could see why you're coming out with that. And uh, honestly, the replay value in it fucking sucks, bro. I'm being honest with you. Like, I haven't been able to go back to much you think on it. it. If you can be viewed as a, as a success, excuse me, if fair trade not fair trade um what the, what the fuck's the song Churchill called Dance. first class if first class oh, wasn't okay. on here do you think the album would, would be viewed would be viewed as, as a big success or not uh, what do you think viewed as a big success it wouldn't have I mean, the like, numbers yeah, because it wouldn't have the numbers well i mean nail tech is what two times platinum at the moment so i mean still i'm is not it, sure if it's two times it might, it might be just platinum right now but yeah I don't know, man. I mean, I think it's bad. I think it's a really bad record. Um, next up, Melt My Eyes Here Future by Denzel Curry. One of my favorite experiences with an album all year long. Denzel really took you um, you know, on a journey with this album. I think in terms of even the rollout, it was masterfully executed from the music videos um, to just the concept of that album of kind of melting you know, former perceptions of yourself, kind of pushing that thematic idea of evolution and he did evolve on this album it feels like a soul quarians album it feels old school but new school at the same time you have some of the best tracks of the year um you know with walkin with um zadowiki and so many others so do you think that that dip in the second half is kind of weighing it down for you a bit no not at all because i've gotten back and i've gone back to tracks like example like angels and other tracks on there that i really do enjoy on the second mental half. is another exactly. one wow. exactly but as you were saying i do think that track one to track six run is absolutely incredible one of the best all year best and of the year and, and i genuinely do think that this is going to crack my top three albums of the year one of my favorite plays so what are you doing? Back in the Amazing? Back in the Amazing, where it belongs. But next up, DS Forever by Gunna. Uh, this is interesting for me, okay? Because, like, I I was okay with this album when it first dropped. And I was like, oh, a lot of the value is really on the first half and this and that. But, bro, honestly, this is my favorite trap album of the year. At least one of them. You Over know, this, Snowfall from Jeezy? Um, th th those two are really mixed for me. I find that Snowfall is a better record. But what do I revisit more? I would go with DS Forever. But, yeah, I, I think that... I want to keep it at good. I don't think it's anything more than that. I could see it going great for me one day just because I've had songs on there in the second half like 25K Jacket, like Too Easy, um, like South to West that have made big pushes within my rotation. But I could understand why people would just want to keep it at good. You know? I, I would go good with it. I mean, even if someone wanted to tell me it was a mid-album, I, I wouldn't look at them twice just because the second half totally fucking falls apart and loses all of its steam. When Gunna goes into his melodic bag... I mean, he's capable of making good melodic tracks like Banking On Me, which came out, I think, Valentine's Day of this year. But on this track list, no, man. The melodies just fall flat. They're super uninteresting, super uninspired. Um, yeah, good album at the most for me. All right, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to 2000 by Joey Badass, another celebrated album this year. Everyone wanted to see the return of Joey Badass, especially after taking five years off from music. He had dropped All American Badass back in 2017. People were like, this is a great direction for his career, but where is he going to go next? It's like, he, it's like he had the rap game exactly. in his palm and he just kind of 
let it kind of slip through his fingers in a way. But I mean, like, but that five year hiatus was kind of needed. I mean, no, it wasn't needed. I think it was needed because what was he going to do? He was going to drop during COVID and then when no one else was going to be listening, could have dropped 2019, he could have dropped 2020. I know, but like, Like, he took time with his music and I think Joey's someone that needs it. Like, I'm not going to look at him and say that all his career's in a different direction because he took that break. I'm just saying, like, people still tuned into this. When you're in your mid 20s and you're looked at as one of the best rappers in the game. I mean, I keep building is. upon that. You know you what still, I mean? You don't think that Joey Badass I, is I still think that he is, but I'm just saying, after a five-year break, he's going back to a sequel. He's not improving, lyrically, in my opinion. In terms of subject matter, in terms of maturing as a writer, absolutely. I give him full credit for that. But in terms of double entendres, wordplay, multisyllabic rhyme schemes, he was doing more of that... On 1999, when he was 17 years old. Yeah, but like, what do you want him to do? Like, I mean, like, I get it, but I, I didn't want to come into this album and be like, okay, it doesn't live up to the standards of 1999. No, Let but me to me, it doesn't live album. up to the standards of Joey the MC because even on Before the Cash, he was I rapping on a that. higher level. I, I, I disagree with that. Just because, like, you go into 2000, you're going to find all kinds of impeccable writing schemes. Example, on something like Eulogy. Like, that's a fantastic written song. I, I never and, knocked the writing. I rocked the actual, the, the actual bar work, bro. Which was the writing. That's what I'm trying to say. No, though, is because, that, bro, so like, what thematically, is the it's not the production. The, the concepts within the songs, they're all great, bro. I'm just saying, like, in terms of a skill as an MC, it's not as moving as his previous records to me. Um, still all kinds of phenomenal songs in here. Brand new 911 zip codes. Like, they're songs that I absolutely adore. The production from Static Selecta, he's giving you that classic boom bap jazz. Um, and it was phenomenal. Even the uh, the Men I Trust sample that's on facts. Show Me, that's, that's one of the best sample flips I've heard this year. Can we both so. agree that it's one of the best produced hip hop albums yes, this year? Yes, yeah, I, w- I would have it in my top five, you know, produced albums this I year. I just say, I think Joey could have done more. That, that, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't know, just because of like the whole secret. Great thing, album though, great album. Y- you would go down to I great. Just, I I held him to such a high bar. I'd go down to great. Man, I, I still think it's an amazing record. If but you want to go amazing, no, we'll, we'll go amazing if I, you feel like I, that. I, I would go that amazing. That is what we gave it on the review, right? We did give it amazing because, yeah. bro, like, there's not, bro, there's no flaws with the writing, and there's really no. Flaws. There is a skip that the Chris Brown song. Yeah, but I'm not gonna get like I'm not gonna knock down a whole two sectors no. just for one song, you know. So I would still go amazing on 2000. Let's go into Intergalactic by Kid Cudi. This is looking a disappointing album for me. I'm gonna be honest with you, like, yeah, it didn't push the boundaries too much on what Kid Cudi could do. Uh, Man in the Moon Three was such a refreshing album for him, just because, like, you know. People were asking, where is he going to go with his career? You know, like his previous releases before that had people questioning his music and like where he decide, where he was going to decide to go with himself. And I think Man of the Moon 3 achieved that. It cemented him. Like it cemented that series and people wanted to see how he was going to build off of that for Intergalactic. I just think that Kid Cudi's in a point in his career right now where like, where else is he going to go musically? You know, like besides the humming, besides the harmonizing, besides those types of production choices, there's really not much else for him to do at this point. And I'm not saying that it's a bad record. I like the record. I think it's good. It's just, it's nothing crazy. You know, it's nothing that you've heard before, you know, out of his catalog. So I'd still keep Intergalactica good. I would go good as well. I mean, it kind of just felt like a soundtrack um, to that TV show that he had written, but he kind of tries to fit in this very loose love narrative, which kind of just becomes abandoned as an idea as you go through the record and follow through with it. Um, Willing to Trust is a big highlight for me. So besides a few big standouts that I'm taking out, you're not getting Cuddy's, you know, best rap performances or singing performances of his career. Nothing that really blew me away or showed me a new side of Cuddy the way that I maybe would have wanted to have seen. But uh, nonetheless, good record for Cuddy. Next up, Vinyl Days by Logic. And everybody was fucking skeptical with this record just because it was going to be 30 songs because Bobby Tarantino 3 was a train wreck of a release. So there was kind of a lot weighing on this. Also, his last record before his Def Jam deal was coming to a close, and he delivered, bro. I cannot remember the last fucking time I heard a 30-song album and was entertained all throughout, and that's because of how clever he was making these you know, short and concise two-minute songs, having exciting features like Wiz Khalifa back on his Kush and OJ vibes, like the sample choices, of course. It's all about fucking, you know, the samples he found from digging up vinyls. That whole idea was brilliant. And again, one of the albums that I had the most fun with all year. What oh, about yeah, you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was super entertaining. You want to talk about Logic's lyrical capability and the way that he's spitting on here? Fantastic. Another thing was, as you said, all two, three minute tracks, you know, at most, yeah. you're not going to find anything overbearing. A lot and of skits. He, absolutely. He didn't overdo his stay on this. And that's what was fucking crazy about the whole concept of the record is that he made a 30 song. 
um, mixtape vibe. Let's call it a mixtape vibe, right? Because that's what it kind of had. Sounds really good and sounds really refreshing in 2022. And bringing back that culture into 2022, I think, was not only a great direction for his career, but now it has everyone else in the community engaged for what he's going to be dropping next and how he's going to be forwarding his career with his next studio album. So I had it amazing at last time. I could keep it at amazing. I don't mind. I, or I could go down to great with it. What do you feel? I could do... Uh, well, let's do great on it. I think you it's think a great it album. Great? Yeah, yeah, because it's maybe not on the level of the Forever Story of Melt My Eyes, but still, it's a super solid record. Um, but let's keep going on with this. King's Disease 3 by Nas. This is arguably the best written album of the year when it comes to just rhyming in all these types of different things that Nas is able to put into a record and the way that he's able to execute on it. And I think that this is the best produced album out of the whole KD series. I genuinely do believe that even as I've given it more and more listens I think it's one of the best produced albums of the year same thing as 2000 when it comes to the rap genre um, we had initially given this amazing where are you going with it it's just one of those albums that feels unreal bro it feels like you know Nas is just running laps for fun at this point he's already proved that he's the fucking goat that he's the best rapper of all time and now he's just making music because it's kind of in his DNA and he found an amazing partner with Hip Boy, probably the best link up that he's had. I mean, obviously, if you want to put P-Rock or DJ Premier in there, um, but to have one producer control his entire albums the way that they've done here, um, you have songs like Thun, you have Michael and Quincy, um, you have these amazing reminiscing type of stories from Nas, but also him kind of mentoring the next generation. So was the subject matter a slight bit repetitive? Um, in relation to the other KDs at times, but he still always finds new ways to spin certain thematic ideas. Yeah. And the rapping is at the highest bar that it could be. He's rapping better um, than people like Kendrick Lamar, and he's almost 50. Yeah, that's a bit of a hot take. I mean, it's a hot I, take. It's a hot take, but I'd have to go back and actually sit with Amazing that for record minutes. for me. Um, not much else to be said, and the best produced hip hop album, arguably, this year. Forget yeah, it is the KD an amazing series. record. Okay, that's great. Let's keep going on. God with this. did. God, dude. God, dude. I mean, I, listen, this is a this is a funny record, man, because it was this whole like redemption story for DJ Khaled, how he's gonna come back and how full of fucking slappers. And I think that this is really the first time DJ Khaled never like doesn't have a single like banger on the album, bro. Like not a single like let's say big. I, anthem, I guess you, you know? could say God did with Jay Z because because that crazy long ass verse. But I mean, even at that, are you playing that? No. No, no I, I'm not playing it all. Yeah, I, I think people. I think are. it was overhyped. I, 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 I think people. Are. It was overhyped because like people look at the runtime of that verse and like it's a well executed verse. It's super well written. I, I think it's it's a great Jay Z verse for 2022, especially at the age that he's at, still delivering on that front, still being competitive, still getting in that bag. But like that's not gonna salvage a whole fucking album for me. You know? Yeah. Like, why am I gonna like for one verse? I'm gonna have to give this you know whole God did like roll out a better a better like sort of standpoint and a better look on it. No, I don't think so. I still think yeah. it's mid. I still yeah, I think it's mid. I think we can kind of end it there. I mean, crazy how it was nominated for the Grammy. But next up we have Hiller wears Hermes Ten by West Side Gun. Apparently the final installment in the series and. I enjoyed it, bro. I mean, I think that... We listened to this on the way to Toronto, no? We did. Stove God Cooks kind of stole the show and ran with it. Like he always does, I, Yeah, like he always does. Um, you know, he did the same thing on side A of, uh, of Hiller Wears Hermes 8. But, I mean, yeah, this was another great record, for, you know, from the Griselda camp. I love the production choices. I think that, you know, West Side Gun is showing once again that he's one of the best curators in the game. That's what I'm saying is that, like, when you go into... It's crazy because we have two curation albums, like, right here, right? You have back to back. Yeah, yeah, so we did just did God did like this is the way you're supposed to curate an album, you know. This is the way you're supposed to approach a rap album, especially with all these types of different features coming through and you know playing their own. And what I like too is that you go through most of these instrumentals, you know, no drums whatsoever. Not, really, not for all of them, like, but, but a lot of them. Yeah. For a lot of them, not only that, but as you were saying, the sample choices on this album sound very rustic and very luxurious at the same time. It feels like you're in like this old Renaissance type of Paris sort of vibe, and you're there and you feel like you're actually in this setting with them while they're rapping but obviously you know the regular grizzle the content matter that you could come to expect the usual about, coke stuff yeah absolutely yeah. and the way that they're able to weave that all into um quite a nice track list as well the pacing of the album was really good for me too so it was good the songs were long like for a 12 song track list you had a lot of like three four minute songs but overall yeah enjoyable record you got black star on here you got run the jewels a lot of 
artists that we've been waiting for Westside Gun to collab with. So, um, yeah, I think that I want to go great on this record. I would go great with Hitler Wears Hermes 10. But let's go on to Feed the Streets 3 by Roddy Rich. We just dropped our first thoughts video on this album. And what's interesting about it is that, you know, when people had listened to Live Life Fast, they completely wrote off Roddy's career saying that he would never come back and deliver another good record. I think that's bullshit because he just delivered Feed the Streets 3. And it felt at home for Roddy. You know, it felt like this deserved to be in a Feed the Streets series. It really paid homage to what he was doing on the first couple of installments and i like the way that he was able to you know kind of go out of his element a bit but still get that signature roddy flow that you want bro get back that gospel voice that we love to see you know don't oversaturate it with all kinds of garbage auto-tune and like plastic song concepts yeah. it's a really well done record and I liked it. Yeah, I still and in think terms it's good. of the sonic palette, I mean, there's not too much going on in terms of diversity of sounds, but when you do get those piano riffs or when you do get um, those strings, they all sound super well polished, well mixed and mastered. And Roddy's performances all throughout, besides a couple of skips like Freaky One with Tyler Dolla Sign, which was just audio fucking porn, <laughs> yeah. um, you had amazing tracks, you had amazing melodies, and some of the best hooks of the entire year. Um, I think that I want to go good on that record. Yeah, I'd go good on Feed the Streets 3. Let's go on to It's Almost Dry by Pusha T. We initially gave this a great rating. I'm still there. I think I could go great with it as well. As I was mentioning, you know, in previous videos and in live streams, because everyone's like, oh, like, you know, you guys hate on this album, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I think it's a great fucking album. I really did enjoy it. But, like, don't tell me that it's the same level as Daytona. Like, don't tell me that it's on the same level as Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. It's not there for me. You That's know, it's, why, like, it's yeah. not. It's not in that class for me, but... I could see it cracking a top 10 list. You know, I could see it cracking someone's top 10 and I wouldn't be mad about it. So but how do you, do you feel you about the record? you think the issue is that we're holding it to push a T's kind of heights? Because what if this was like a Benny the Butcher record or if it was a Freddie Gibbs record? Do you think that we would view, you know, view it in a higher maybe, light? Yeah, maybe, maybe, but maybe, but I still think that like, what songs like Scrape It Off and like, what was Rock the, and Roll? Yeah, rock and Roll, like... Those are not Those great misses. tracks. Yeah, absolutely. And I, like, it's a lot to have to even call my bluff. I know everyone loves it. Um, I just thought that it was super boring of a performance. I mean, very, a bit too patient. I feel like he was kind of just extending the runtime and it was too airy of a song. You know what I mean? I feel like I needed more vocals um, to fill that for the fill up that track. But overall, yeah, even a lot of the bars were a bit elementary for push. I felt like there was a, a regression there as well. I would go great still on this yeah, album. Yeah, it's still great. Not right. an album of the year contender. I know it's hot, but that's how we feel. Next up, only built for Infinity Links by Quavo and Takeoff. Of course, rest in peace to Takeoff. Um, big tragic event this year, and he did leave us, um, you know, with a great record, bro. I was really impressed by what they did here. I think the chemistry was on point all throughout. I love how they stuck to their southern roots, you know, sampling so fresh, so clean, and doing it in such um, a graceful way, I want to say. And in terms of the review, do you still feel the same way? I think we ended up giving it, was it a good rating? No, we gave it a, I think we gave it a mid rating. It I might think, have been mid, actually, I, I, I yeah. I think we had given it a mid rating. Um, listen, Has it grown on you? <sighs> It's tough to say, bro, you know, because the thing was is that with the review, we had made arguments about that second half of the album falling off and we didn't really enjoy it. And I still stand on that. Like, I still go to the second half of the album and I'm not all that engaged. Um, what I will say, though, is that the first half of it is really strong. Like, this is a DS Forever situation with me, at least with mm. this album, is that when I get into, like, that first half, I'm really locked and engaged. And there still are songs that I'm going back to on the second half. It's just as an overall album, it's good. You know, like I would bump it up one, but like I wouldn't say it's one of the best records no. this year, at least in my opinion. You know, I know a lot of people do enjoy this record. I do as well. I think that I was a bit too harsh on it on my first review with it, but I would only bump it up by one. I would go good with yeah, it. Yeah, I'm good. But I'm good with either. Uh, yeah, I would go with good. I would go with good. I feel like Quavo's melodic and hook game, I just never picked back up. Yeah, but he still had he still had great rapping performance on it, though, because the thing is, is that like I feel like Takeoff's a much better rapper when it comes to like verses and actually laying down like groundwork for rapping in comparison to Quavo but he was able to keep his own throughout the whole album like it wasn't a thing where I felt like either of them you know were overpowering yeah. each other with through the track list so good for only only built for Cuban links <laughs> fuck, infinity I links yeah, infinity links yeah. excuse me and the album cover is hard as fuck too but let's go on to baby on baby 2 by the baby another trap album and this is a return for the baby man this record is really not it's that great two years to make this <laughs> In two fucking years bro <laughs> it's oh my goodness i was stunned i couldn't believe how bad this was bad album for me um he definitely didn't know what he was doing when it came to um changing the vocal pitches 
when he was kind of going with the vocal effects, that deep voice that maybe portray a character or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, like he was trying to play like hip hop's monster within like the whole album, and like it really fell flat because no one really understood the concept of the record. And Jammed up with YouTube beats as well. Oh, absolutely. The production on there was really stale, and man, it was one of the most boring um, listens I had this year. At least in my opinion, people might like it. It's definitely not for me. I would go with a bad record on yeah, Baby on Baby. Absolutely. Two. Next up, Drill Music in Zion by Lupe Fiasco. Probably gonna crack my top five of this year. I think that. Everything included, it's the best concept record of the year. I mean, just looking at, you know, Drill Music and Zion, the multiple meanings of just that album title, the multiple meanings of the album itself, the way that he's looking at the hip-hop culture, the way that he's looking at, um, you know, the culture of America and the, the, the crime rates that are escalating and just his philosophies, bro, are just elevated. His vocabulary is elevated. I think that you're getting some of the most volatile and explosive rapping performances on the of the year with songs like Autobotto. I think the production is great. I know you were knocking it the last time that we spoke. No, I wasn't knocking it. I just, I, I don't think it's, it's better produced than Mr. Morale for me. No, you see, I wouldn't go that far. Like, I would say that there's more of a dynamic soundscape on Mr. Morale than there is on Joe Music and Zion. Like, it's pretty at home for what Lupe does and that doesn't mean it's not great it's a great produced album I, ju I do enjoy it I really do think that the sample choices that were done uh, especially with this jazzy soundscape that was going all the way through with it were, was really well done as well it's just it's nothing ridiculous you know it's nothing crazy but it was still great though but yes I do think Joe Music and Zion is going to be cracking my top 10 of the year list what Lupe did on this was a master class of lyrical performance I mean could you expect anything else from one of the best MCs of all time yeah. when it comes to penship so amazing listen, amazing record from Lupe Fiasco let's keep going on with this Demons Protected by Angels by Nav and we low key had some high hopes for this project bro I'm not gonna lie dude. I know like, we went in we were expecting some bangers on this but dude there's not a single banger on this album same thing with Baby on Baby 2 like Got a bit corny at times, bro. Like, yeah, not just my not my cup of tea, you know. Cringy lyrics, not too much energy at all from Nav. And I know that, like people are gonna laugh at that because, you know, a lot of people think that Nav never brings in energy, but he does. He does have his energetic tracks, and here he just kind of sounded tired. He sounded like. A lot of the verses were just being phoned in. At least you got Never Sleep out of this. That's another yeah. thing. Never Sleep was a solid single for the okay. album. I was okay with that. But I mean, listen, overall, I think Demons Protected by Angels goes into the bad category. Yeah. Let's go on to Sold Sold Separately by Freddie Gibbs. And this was such a surprising record because the last two albums that we had gotten from Freddie um, were two albums that were handled by Soul Producers in The Alchemist and then with Mad Lib in 2019 with Bandana, 2020, of course, with Alfredo. And getting Sold Sold Separately was going to be kind of a mixed bag for me as far as like emotions and like as I was going into the album because I was like how are all these different producers going to play into the actual album itself and I think it was executed on a great fucking front this is definitely again another album that I'm considering for my top 10 Me of the year list I love the replay value on this album you know there's just there's so many great fucking songs on this album bro what are your, what's your top three on this top bro? three on this album let me go check out this track list real quick I mean there's so many to go through um, obviously zipper bags has to be in there um Cool. Couldn't couldn't be done. The sample on that is amazing. Blackest in the room. You feel like you're in a live jazz cafe and Freddie is just spitting. Um, what else do we have? Gold Rabbit Rings. Vision. Gold Rings for me is another top three song off of this album. But regardless, though, like Freddie Gibbs is also giving you a great concept record as he's kind of watching his whole world crash in front of him as he's staying at like this beautiful resort. And you just hear like even Joe Rogan on the album, you know, and like all these different types of characters that he was able to put into the actual essence of it. I think it was super well done. I'm going amazing on it. Amazing still. album for me, too. Absolutely. Next up, 7220 by Lil Dirk. Um... I think that it's one of his better albums that he's ever put out. Absolutely. I, I do prefer it over The Voice. Um, I think that it was cool to see Lil Durk really take you back to his old neighborhood to really give you the personal anecdotes that he came with. Love songs like what happened to Virgil. Um, but overall, the production wasn't as strong as I felt it could have been. I feel like Lil Durk's beat selection does have to improve. Um, the hooks aren't that memorable either for me. But I will say this, the personal writing on the album does do a lot of like groundwork for me. I really like how there was a maturity and there yeah. was a step in his writing over here. I would go good with 7220. I would keep it as is. I think it's a good record. I think it's a good record too. But next up, God Don't Make Mistakes by Conway the Machine. This is another one that a lot of people are hailing as the album of the year. And I do think that it's a great record. I think that Conway the Machine is probably, you know, the best lyricist in Griselda next to Rome Streets and next to Boldy James. 
Mm-hmm. I think you can make that argument. Um, when it comes to this album, I just don't feel like it's as aggressive, as dark, as quick in pace but people, as other Conway records. But people wanted that. I, I, I don't, people wanted it, bro. I know people, they wanted that you meditative wanted Conway I, album. I know. Maybe people like you and I wanted it. But I was willing to kind of take a step back from that whole emotion because of how vulnerable and how personal this album is it for really Conway. Is. Um, he's talking about a lot of deep and heavy content matter on this track list. Um, and it's definitely an album that you guys need to go through genius with. Like, you need to go and like read all of, like let's say, the lines and like all the flashbacks that he's using throughout his verses because I think that that was the point of the record for him was kind of like showing you like what it took to get to the point that he's at right yeah. now and showing you that this was not built overnight this was really not a mistake this was all planned this was all calculated and god does not make mistakes yeah. when it comes to me you know even him just like embracing his hardships you know there's songs on here like stressed for example like guilty that are just phenomenal where he's just talking about like you know what i really be in the chair that i'm in if it wasn't you know for the accident that happened, you know what I mean? Where, where he got shot up. And, you know, it's just, it's amazing to see how reflective he got. Um, songs like John Woo Flick, you're getting a, a classic Griselda posse cut there too. So um, definitely a special album this year. Amazing, without a doubt. God Don't Make Mistakes is amazing. But what did we give it? Did we give it great, I believe? We might have given it great. Yeah, I would go up to amazing I would go it. up to amazing on it. But I mean, yeah, I just feel like it was a, a bit lackluster in terms of the energy. I felt like it was a bit one-dimensional in terms of he was always in the same kind of register. Yes and no. I, I could see where you're coming from. That, but that, like, that's a little knock and why I think I gave it great to begin with, but it's tough. It, it's in that range. It is a very tough album to analyze, but let's keep going on with A few this. good like, things. Oh, man, this is still an amazing record for me, bro. I, I love the concept of the record because it's kind of sad, but taking a step back from his life and um, observing everything that he's accomplished, but not necessarily gravitating towards the materialistic and all the riches that he's been able to gain off of the success of his career, but more appreciating you know, what he's accomplished in his personal life and how like he's really appreciating the few good things in his life. And still, one of my favorite tracks of the year is that outro track and the self-titled few good things with black thought um i I love black thoughts verse on there it's very 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 meditative and you know this whole album gets you thinking because sometimes in life you get you know caught up in loops and you create these paradigms for yourself but what few good things did for me was kind of like make me appreciate the few good things you know make me appreciate the little things that do complete life so i still have it as an amazing rating amazing production um love how atmospheric it is it feels like you're really just surrounded by nature and it's a very peaceful environment and yeah it just it goes to show that Saba is a master of crafting these amazing concept records like he's done before with Care For Me and um, yeah I think he stepped it up in terms of experimenting vocally and um, yeah he really put out a great effort I think that it is amazing Next up, it's only me by little baby. Jeez, okay, this one's funny because like oh. we had we had high expectations for this one. Before, Did we give it a bad rating? We gave it a yeah. bad rating, yeah. And I think yeah. that I might still stay there. I'm being honest with you, bro. When you get 23 tracks of the same fucking song all the way through, there's not much value in a reason to go back and Why listen to this hunger, record, bro. Not only that, but like even the singles for this album were really fucking concerning and I feel like it's one of those albums that everyone was speaking about when it was supposed to drop and then boom bro like that first week kind of just flew out of rotation for everyone and bro it was really really a big disaster as far as quality goes at least in my opinion but listen people could still like it it's their cup of tea not really mine. weird transitions too yeah. like that nardo wick song it felt like two completely different songs um so the production as well is a bit messy i feel like very generic in terms of the types of drum patterns you're getting um yeah i just think that it was a big miss all around from someone that could have really taken the reins bro like absolutely this yeah, bring this to a whole different yeah, level man. like this is this cannot be in the same conversation as my turn it's no. really on a whole um, different level so that's level. a bad album again next up though we have ramona park broke my heart by vince staples yes. and um super impressive album I think that it, it is an amazing record. That's, that's, that is the reading that we gave it. I think that um, he's done it before where he's taken us to his upbringing. He's taken us, you know, to his neighborhood of Ramona Park and, you know, shown us the types of different paths that he could have taken in his life. And he does that here, but with more personal depth, with more clarity. Um, and I think that it is Vince's most personal album. I think that um, you're getting a lot of West Coast flavor with songs like Magic, which I absolutely loved. He's also giving you anthems with songs like A. Um, and I think that overall he gave you a fun experience 
while also showing you the darkness that surrounded his growth into the game. Absolutely. And I think that even the writing is well executed upon as well because it gives you that nice backstory of where he was at and how he was able to complete his journey and all the little trials and tribulations that he had to go through and how those affect his present day mood. And again, like when I was listening back to self-titled last year, I'm like, wow, you know, he's definitely upgrading his pen game. And that was done again on this one. I'm not going to say it's a better written album than Vince Staples. I don't think so. But like, still, like, it's within that realm for me. And the consistency by Vince as of lately has been ridiculous. So Rem Ramona Park broke my heart, goes into the amazing category. Let's go into Snowfall by Jeezy. So listen, I think that this is arguably trap album of the year. Um, kind of went under the radar for a lot of the community just because like when you think about trap nowadays, you know, gonna future you know people are gravitating towards that but people have to give this record more respect just because you have someone that's in the later half of their career that's coming through and dominating the lane once again as far as quality goes and the record is super triumphant it's the perfect workout album as well and there's not a single skip throughout this whole project bro like for whoever like is subscribed to the patreon if you haven't checked out our reaction to Snowfall. This is probably the album that got us fucking moving and jumping out of our chairs the most the entire yeah, fucking absolutely. year, bro. And it's just because of Jeezy's relentless energy throughout this entire album. He's spitting at high volumes. Obviously, the subject matter might get repetitive at times, but he does go personal towards the second half. And like you said, super triumphant. I love the horns. I love the big bass that kicks in. I love the beat switches on here. Amazing decisions to bring in Justice League and an array of amazing producers to bring this big sound. And DJ Drama's narration wasn't overbearing. Absolutely. It yeah, just it, hyped you up. It did hype you up. So listen, I think that, what do you want to go with? Great or amazing on this one? Sheesh. I, I think great just because it doesn't stack up to the quality of some of the other albums we have on this list. But Definitely the best trap album of the year. For yeah, me. I would probably go great with this one. But let's go on to from a third, from excuse me from a bird's eye view by Core Day. This was another disappointing record for me. And like when we had dropped our review, I feel like everyone was kind of bitten in denial because they really wanted Core Day to have that major. They wanted moment. him to win. I Absolutely. wanted him to win too. And, and like, but I just had to be honest with the record. Yeah. Like I was not feeling it whatsoever. Like it was a big downgrade from the Lost Boy. Um, you had gotten cheesy attempts at pop hits on this. You know, you had gotten songs where you were like, okay, you know, what am I really getting out of this album? And one of the most forgettable listens I had all year, at least in my opinion, for what made my rotation. Yeah, still some quality songs. C. Carter, Jean-Michel, uh, Jean Mama's Hood. Uh, when, you, when you go to the songs with, with Gunna, when you go to the songs with Dirk, you're just like, you know... This, this wasn't This is not the lane that you were kind of heading towards. And I'm not saying that he has to stick towards a certain lane, but I just feel like their aesthetics didn't kind of suit the rest of the sonic elements of the album and just the vibe of the album. And yeah, when you're getting that court, that melodic cordae, it's not his strong suit. I don't feel like he played to his strengths and um, it didn't feel as concise as, as it could have been. Mid-album for me still. Mid-album from a bird's eye view. But let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Cheat Goes by Black Thought and Danger Mouse. Interesting because like Danger Mouse is is not necessarily known as a hip hop producer, and for him to come through and, and deliver such a crazy fucking soundscape, bro, for Black Thought to lay down all of these beautiful anecdotes upon was really well executed, bro. I'm really impressed with this record. Again, another album I'm considering not only for my top five, uh, sorry, not only for my top ten, but my top five. Yep. And I, I don't think that there's many flaws you could find with this project, bro. Definitely still amazing for me. Again, in terms of writing, I have this right up there, um, you know, with Drill Music and Zion. The sample choices are so unique. You're getting good soul samples. At times, you're getting samples that sound like they're plugged from you know progressive rock records so a nice vast selection of sounds black thought rapping at the fucking highest level imaginable songs like aquamarine, oh, aquamarine. that chill oh you God. to your core um really blew me away as he always does so Absolutely. shout out to black thought and i'm waiting for that new roots record bro yes I we am. fucking need that we definitely need that that's gonna be a whole amazing for record for cheat codes next up to alive by yeet he dropped two albums this year. He dropped Two Alive and he dropped, I believe, Life. Two um, Alive, uh, uh, Two Alive is better though. Two, two Alive. Alive is the better record. Um, I think it was a good record. It I was a good record. You know, it, it's original in the sense that Yeet is coming with his flair, with his own vocabulary, um, as annoying as it might be at times. Just because, I mean, to me, this is kind of 
the true definition of mumble rap, if you want to go with that term, into the sense that. But he had spoken about that. It, like it, it almost clip. doesn't even matter what he's saying. Yeah, you know what I mean? It doesn't. It doesn't. And I think that where you're going to find most of the quality on this record production. is within the production, but also his playful deliveries and how unique they are to him. Like, I, I, I was in the live stream the other night and someone had said that, like, oh, anyone could do what Yeats doing and just hop at any average show. I'm like, so why isn't everyone doing it? You know, like, why isn't everyone making a tool live or something like life? Like, they should go into that link because you'd probably be become a multi-millionaire but for the most part what i like about this record is that it's super fun i do think that there is filler on there it's around five tracks towards the end i think that could cut it down i think it should have been a 12 to 14 song album but i mean it depends you know it's everyone has their own vibe i think it still is a good record though i would go mid on it to be honest with you You would go mid on it i think i gave it good originally but i would stick with good on it i think it's a good record i'll bud with you on this next up tana talk four by benny the butcher this was a very anticipated sequel, bro. Like, there it was, was fucking pressure on Benny. It was. Because the plugs I met, too, wasn't like that greatly received. I mean, people liked it and people thought it was quality, but it definitely wasn't up to like Benny's standards. So coming back with Tana Talk 4, you know, having, you know, the band back together, coming back with, let's say, Derringer, coming back with, let's say, Beat Butcher, coming back with The Alchemist to create this super spooky and dark and vicious soundscape where Benny's going back to the street co- talk and like, you know, all the coke talk was perfectly executed upon and I still think it's an amazing Yeah, I just think that it's a very scenic soundscape. Songs like Super Plug, that fucking piano, bro. I mean, you really feel like you're just in this dark alleyway and I feel like that's what Benny does so well on this album is that he puts you in certain places lyrically, sonically, some of the best songs of the year with Johnny P's Caddy, back two times, the back and forth he had with Stove God there was amazing. Um, I mean, yes... You, you could say that you don't have um, some of the highs that you had on Tana Talk 3, but you do have a lot of standouts on here. And yeah, I thought that it was amazing. You want to go amazing? I think we yeah, gave it great yeah, originally. I, no, I think we gave it amazing. No, we had given it amazing. We had oh, given actually, it amazing? we didn't even give it a rating, did we? I think we did. Because we had kind of stopped the whole rating system once we had gotten to the album. But um, yeah, I think we're going to end off the video today with Tana Talk 4, bro. At the end of the day, I think it's one of the best Coke records of the year. And I'd still go with Amazing. How about you? Absolutely. I would go with Amazing. But guys, let us know. How do you rate all of these albums? Drop it down in the comments. And we have so much end of the year content coming your way. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for all the support. We love you. And we'll catch you in the next one.